It's really a pleasure for me to be able to uh, talk to you about Ben Graham. And, uh, I've had some lucky days in my life, but uh, one of the luckiest was in 1949 when I was 19 years old in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I picked up a copy of The Intelligent Investor. It not only uh, changed my investment philosophy, it, it really changed my whole life. I, I'd, I'd be a, a different person in a different place if, if I hadn't have uh, uh, first seen that book. Uh, uh, I got a bedrock of uh, uh, investment philosophy that really hasn't changed ever since I read the book. I may embellish on it a little here and there, but it, it was Ben's ideas that sent me down the right right path. And uh, then a year or so later, uh, I very belatedly applied to Columbia University, and Dave Dodd let me in, and uh, I got to know Ben personally uh, when he was my professor uh, in the second semester there. And when I finished up, of course, I, I said I'd go to work for him for nothing, and he said I was overpriced, and he probably was right. But a few years later, I got a letter from him, and he, uh, he said, next time you're in New York, I'd like, to, I'd like to talk to you. And I made a point of being there about 24 hours later, and he offered me a job. And I didn't ask the salary, but fortunately, when I, at the end of the first month, I found out he'd not taken me, or he'd, maybe he'd forgotten about the fact that I'd do it for nothing. Uh, uh, and I, I got inspired working for him. Uh, just being around him every day. Uh, and then we developed this friendship, which, uh, which lasted uh, until he died, about 25 years uh, later. So uh, I, I, I really had a quarter of a century of experience with a, a marvelous man. And, and you all know about, about his mind and his ideas and uh, uh, the influence they've had on the, the profession of security analysis. Uh, uh, the influence they probably had on you and your own portfolios, and certainly me. Um, but the human side was just as, as impressive. He was a generous man. Um, when my first son was born shortly after uh, I went back to take the job in December of 1954, my son was born, and I uh, gave him the middle name of uh, Graham. I named him after my dad, Howard, and then after Ben Graham with the middle name of Graham. And Ben came over to our apartment in White Plains and uh, uh, gave me a uh, camera and uh, a movie projector. It was a lot different doing that sort of thing in those days. And uh, so I could record uh, uh, what was happening with Howard Graham Buffett from uh, virtually the moment he was born. Uh, a little later, he, he, I think my wife had said something to him about my lack of uh, dancing ability or something, which was well justified. And uh, Ben gave me a uh, a certificate for some free lessons at the Arthur Murray Dance Studio in White Plains. That may have been the worst investment he ever made. Uh, it was he—he he did not get his money's worth when he uh, when he did that. Uh, uh, he moved out to California, in 1956, and uh, uh, my family uh, visited him time after time, and he was always encouraging. The one thing about it is that you never could balance the books with Ben. He was—he would do things for me. Uh, or for other members of the family, and you never could think of anything to do for him. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a real pleasure for me in a small way to be able to attempt to balance the books by just telling uh, you and the rest of the world what a wonderful human being he was. And, and that's what really counts. I mean, he, he couldn't help but be smart. I mean, he was born wired in a way where he was going to be able to accomplish things intellectually that very, very few people uh, could do. Uh, and when you think about particularly in the light of today's markets, think what a remarkable achievement it was to be writing a book in 1934, Security Analysis, probably was writing it in 1932 and 3, and here was a man that had been devastated by the Depression and the stock market crash. Uh, you know, many of you managed money. He was managing money for people, and they were disappointed with what had happened. But he could see far enough out in the future that, that he still uh, t turned out this marvelous book in a dispassionate, very rational way uh, and not overwhelmed by the uh, the events of the previous couple of years, but he, he wrote a book where 75 or so years later, we're still uh, reading it to learn new things every day. So it was a marvelous intellectual achievement. But but again, that he couldn't help that. He he, he was he was he was born with that brain. He didn't have to be the wonderful human being he was. I mean, he could have behaved in an arrogant manner or, or, or had, a, had a tone of superiority because he, he had to know he was smarter than 99.99% .99 of the people around him. But he wasn't that kind of a person at all. He, he, he treated uh, all of us students, 
came up to Columbia on a Thursday uh, for 20 or 25 years for just to help out a bunch of students that he might never see again, that weren't going to do anything for him. He was sharing knowledge that, in effect, was going to make them competitors. I bought some of the same stocks that uh, Graham Newman was buying, his investment company, later on. I didn't buy them in very big quantities because they didn't have that kind of money. But uh, he, was creating, he was creating competitors. He, it didn't bother him. He, he used current examples. Uh, uh, we would sit there in class, and he would tell us about things that, that uh, we never would have found on our own. But uh, he was just a generous man he, in, 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 in every way. And uh, uh, I was lucky to know him, and I hope you've gotten to know him a little bit through these comments.